sometimes you need more than flowers or chocolates or even a dewy-eyed kitten to say, sorry. Sometimes you need a subcompact crossover. That's the case with the new Toyota CHR, which will be coming to the US next year and which is at least as much an apology as it is a car, one delivered from the automaker to its European buyers. More precisely, its non-buyers. While Toyota dominates in much of the world, it has always struggled to gain traction in the land of cheese and sauerkraut, particularly in the hard-fought hatchback segment. Last year the Toyota Urus, a British-built version of the Corolla, sold just 140,000 units across the continent, barely more than a quarter of what the Volkswagen Golf managed. Hence the need for a Euro-focused crossover to add some sales magic and compete with entries such as the Nissan Kashikai and the Peugeot 2008. First Europe, then the world. The original plan was to make the CHR exclusively for Europe, but then other markets, including the United States, got to look at it and became interested. It's not just Europe that likes small crossovers, after all. Keen lobbying has seen the CHR confirmed for other markets, including America, although we'll be getting a different engine from the Eurospec versions that we drove there. The name is both silly and a misnomer, according to Toyota, it stands for Coupe High Rider. Although it has been made to look slightly coupish, in reality this is a four-door crossover with the rear door handles incorporated into the C-pillars. The styling is radical by any standard and positively revolutionary for a brand as generally conservative as Toyota. It's clear that lots of pent-up creativity has been expended in its creation, let's hope there's some left for the upcoming Supra. And although coupe and SUV are pretty much dog and cat in design terms, the fusion here works reasonably well. The cabin is only slightly less out there, with the swoopy design fitting around the hard points of some familiar Toyota switch gear, including the same digital clock that the company has fitted into the dash of seemingly everything it has built for at least three decades. There's a slightly overwrought diamond theme going on in the cabin too, with the shape featured everywhere from the ventilation controls to the embossing of the headliner and the door panels. There's decent space in the front end, against expectations, in the back as well, although the tiny side windows induce claustrophobia. Three powertrains, but only one for us. Europe will be getting the option of a 114 horsepower 1.2 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine and a 1.8 liter hybrid that pretty much repackages the Prius's class electric powertrain. Both the CHR and that hybrid hatch are based on Toyota's TNGA platform, sadly, neither of those powertrains will be coming to the States, at least not initially. Chief engineer Hiroyuki Koba has confirmed that the US will be restricted to a naturally aspirated 2.0-liter four-cylinder, which will make up for its relative lack of sophistication with the dose of extra power, 144 horsepower and 140 pounds to foot we'll have to wait until the car arrives stateside to tell you what that engine is like in the CHR, as we didn't get a chance to sample it at the European launch. Americans should be disappointed at not being offered the 1.2-liter turbo, which is a sweet little engine that makes up for its relative lack of firepower with a torque output that's too flat to be accurately described as a curve. The peak 136 pounds to foot is available from 1500 rpm all the way to 4000 revolutions per minute. There's enough mid-range punch to minimize objections to its extremely low 5,600 revolution per minute redline. It feels quicker than its factory estimated 11.4 second 0 to 62 mile per hour time suggests, especially when working with the slick shifting 6 speed manual that will be standard in Europe, and which even has a rev matching function to help smooth down shifts. There's also a continuously variable automatic, which will be the only transmission choice in the US by the standards of such things it's not too bad, allowing the engine to coast along on its brawn at lower speeds or during constant velocity cruising. Requests for acceleration, however, produce the familiar stirring soundtrack as the engine and gearbox both give their best. The hybrid drives pretty much exactly like a Prius, the electrical assistance making it quieter under gentle use but not making it feel much quicker. 
the CHR drives well, particularly if you apply the Ford Toyota Proviso. The chassis doesn't deliver much of the excitement promised by the styling, nor does it demonstrate much obvious input from being partially developed on the Nürburgring Nord's life, but it rides well, has a decent amount of grip, and manages to feel both taut and agile when asked to deal with the rough road at speed. The electrically assisted power steering lacks any sensation beyond its raw weight, and optimistic cornering speeds result in understeer, but the CHR is both comfortable and refined at the 8 tenths pace where it's happiest. We suspect the CHR will sell better than Toyota's relatively modest sales predictions of around 100,000 cars a year in Europe and another 100,000 in the rest of the world, with the US being one of the bigger markets. It's pretty much spot on the current zeitgeist, and it's not hard to see it having a strong appeal to those who find the larger RAV4 too conventional or too big. Too big.